This is a 2019 Ford Transit. This is a two-wheel drive, long wheelbase, extended high roof. So this is the biggest one you can get in the Transit. It's really nice to drive. Uh, as I have mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, I really prefer the Transit over the ProMaster or the Sprinter for that matter. The interiors are comfortable, they're pleasant to drive. In the high roof one, it can be a little bit uh, windy, as in it'll grab the, the wind will grab it on the highway and stuff like that. But once it's loaded up and built, they're really pretty comfortable and nice to drive. This is the NA V6, so this is a 3.7 liter. Now it'll be a 3.5 liter from 2020 on. And then they still have the EcoBoost option as well. I went with uh, this van for this client. I went out to LA to buy this van. They're kind of hard to find in this configuration because everybody wants them to build. So I drove out to LA, picked up this van. I wanted to stick with the NA V6 just for simplicity's sake. They have enough power. They do fine uphill. You can have the AC on, they do great, but you don't have twin turbos and extra oil lines that come with that, uh, as well as the added stress to the engine that a turbo will put on it. So while I really like the EcoBoost, and for some people that might be a really good option for this van and for this client, we really just wanted to keep it simple, keep maintenance costs down. More or less, this is the same as uh, Ford F-150 or whatever else when it comes down to it underneath the skin of it. Uh, it's just regular V6 with uh, Burley 975 ring and pinion rear axle and some heavier duty suspension. So I've had many of you ask if I take on these projects as work and whatever else. I do. It's just when it's just me and occasionally I have Marcus helping me out that it takes quite a lot of time and even a single build with the level of quality that I try and put out takes months. So uh, right now I'm booked out past the end of 2021 and that's not even considering my own projects that I wanna take care of and stuff like that. So I just don't really quite have time to schedule that far out and work with people on getting stuff built. But so this is the next project up and also trying to film and document this as I go. So hopefully it can be helpful from the build perspective and uh, maybe down the line I'll be able to open up more to contracting some work out. This van should get an actual measurement but is about six, five, six foot five standing room with, without a floor or ceiling in it. So it'll come down probably to about six four, maybe six three. But even for me, it being 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that's enough for to stand up fully in and have a little bit of headroom. So another benefit of the transit high roof over the Sprinter high roof is you can stand up all the way. In the extended, there's about 13, a little over 13 feet of room from the seam right behind the seats to the back doors. So it's a pretty long van, but they drive very similar to like an F-150 or whatever else, other than getting tugged around by the wind a little bit. So this is gonna be a full build with pretty much everything you can imagine in it. Uh, I got lucky and got a van that had the wall panels and this flooring material, material already in here. Now, while I'm more than likely not gonna be using any of that it very very much helps the process in that i don't have to stencil and make templates for each wall panel and each flooring panel and everything like that i can pull these out of here trace them onto the piece that i'm actually going to be using and then go from there and that's going to save me 40 hours probably of work so if you are looking and you're you know looking around and want to buy a van keep that in mind these can be really helpful. Transit 250, which rides nice, that has a 9,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, 
which means I have about 3,300 pounds of max capacity that I can build into the back of this, which should be more than enough since a lot of it's gonna be aluminum. I swapped out the pretty basic AM FM radio. They have a, this is a 2019 again. They have an auxiliary cord, but that's about it. So you can't charge and play music on your iPhone. So I swapped it out with this dash kit. It's not quite installed all the way yet. I gotta route the mic and uh, Boss Audio Elite system, which is pretty good. It has Apple CarPlay, pretty functional. Makes it a little bit nicer, you can use maps. Probably the crown jewel of the Ford Transits is the cup holders. These bottom ones here, you can fit 40 ounce hydro flasks in. These ones fit the, what is this, 30 ounce. And then you also have the ones up high over here. So for a van, really good. You can fit your phone in this pocket here. I have a phone holder down here, but you can kind of make your own. This van, I'm not sure if they all come with the backup camera or not. This van has the backup camera in the rear view mirror. Pops up there. It is quite nice. Works really well. You can get within, sorry about the beeping. You can get within a couple inches of what you're looking to get at. And it's really clear. This van has these overhead cargo lights already in there. I may end up using the wiring and just rerouting it to my own batteries, but those lights will get changed out with a warmer white light. These trim pieces here are styrofoam. I'll probably end up shaving them and making them look prettier and then probably coating them with fabric. As for the layout of the build, I'll try and get a drawing and put it up. Start from the back and go forward. Happy Jack electric bed, which will be a queen size. That will be the rear six feet or so of the van. And that will be able to lift up to the ceiling. And so you'll have about uh, five foot nine, five foot 10 clearance or so in the back. When the bed is up, there'll be bench seating, kind of a booth seating with a table, bench on either side, most of the utilities. And if you watch my previous Sienna video, uh, that, that style of bed where it slides out on drawer slides, a lot of people have commented on it not being strong enough. I'll uh, make an example of that being plenty strong when, uh, when we get to that point. Passenger side, will be mostly all storage. That'll lift up and you'll just have a big storage bench there. This side is all going to be utilities. We'll see if I can fit what I need to fit, but it'll be fresh water, water pump, all of the electrical, including inverter, solar charge controller, all the wiring, the batteries, ideally. We'll see what I can fit in there. It's getting lithiums, two 300 amp hour lithiums with uh, built-in BMSs. 600 watts of solar on the roof, a Max Fan Deluxe 7500, a six inch round, round Max Fan, and also a Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioning, which is a 12 volt AC unit. There will be a galley cabinet that will have the fridge and possibly the sink on the passenger side. And as far as windows go, it is getting AMA or AM Auto windows, which will be 40 by 15 half sliders in the back. If we look at the outside here, I can show you around about where. So those 40 by 15 sliders will go somewhere in this rear panel. And then it'll also be getting a passenger side sliding door, full AM Auto half slider. These are all glue in windows, so I'm gonna have to cut the panels and then use a window glue, window weld to fasten those in. The way I build stuff is very much out of my head. I like doing it that way because I can make design changes quickly and implement design changes as needed. I can show you 
usually I'll have a basic sketch for how I build stuff. So the Sienna build, if you've watched that video, if you haven't, go ahead and go back and check it out. I built that whole van off of this sketch here. Also, if you're hitting these into, space, into place or trying to even out the sides, uh, you can use a rubber hammer or I like to use my two pound baby sledge, which is one of my favorite tools. And just to throw a two by four on the edge, hold it with your foot and just give it a couple smacks. That way it doesn't bash up the side of the fly. I'm not using this side, but I still don't want to screw it up. So you can do that to hit them in from the side and the end as well. So. Put this on the end, you can hammer it down the line and it'll close up the gap on all of them. You want to make sure those are nice and tight before you stencil out where you're going to cut. I'm keeping the driver's side, which will actually probably end up being this side because I'm upside down, all nice and even across the line because that way I don't have to cut that side. Usually the sides of these vans don't really taper much, if at all. So I might be able to get away with just keeping that a straight line and just cutting out for the wheel well and the slide, the driver's side slider door set up there, which I also might cut out of there and plate in. I'm not sure yet. So what you'll see me doing on this as I go through here is labeling each of the panels that I'm removing just so I know their exact location for the future. It'd be pretty easy to figure out what's what, but for this, it's just nice to know. So I got D1 upper, D2 upper, D3 upper, as in driver, and then just going down the line. This will help me keep, keep track of what I have and where it goes. Same on this side, passenger one, passenger two, passenger three, four, five, six, down the line. Now I'll be figuring out what and where uh, any factory holes that I have will be going. So I'll be either marking or punching holes through the vinyl floor here. I'm gonna lift the front section, fold it back. Let me get it all lined up nice so I'm happy with where it is. So then I can transfer that onto the OSB subfloor. This van has about 35,000 miles on it. And this is why I'm saying, go ahead and line this up, make sure it's exactly where you want it because just having people slide whatever it was used for in here previously or even me with the plywood and whatever else has scooted the floor forward so if I were to peel it back and find those bolt holes I would be off about a half inch so I'm going to go ahead and scoot it back get it aligned where I'm happy with it and then we'll go ahead and start finding those bolt holes I like to make anything that I make serviceable for people in the future or myself because oftentimes when something goes wrong and it's not a myth no matter how well you build something it's always going to be a when there will always be an issue, especially with stuff this complex. You can try and try and get it dialed as much as possible, and that's great, but there will always be something that pops up. So having it be serviceable without having to do hours and hours of work to get to that point, to me, is very important. So I like to have everything so I can get to it. So it is pretty dirty under here but Ford made it relatively easy. There are no, uh, there are no factory bolt holes that I see. There's this plug here, which gives me a good idea. So I can look under this plug to the side and see the frame rail is on this rib. So that'll go the full length of the van. That's a pretty safe place to drill if you have to drill inside the van because it's in the frame rail, it's protected from the elements for the most part. And they don't run anything inside of that frame rail. There might be a vent tube or something like that, but uh, shouldn't be anything other than maybe a connector or whatever else. So you shouldn't hit anything. So what I'm gonna do is probably run some self tappers down the length of the both sides on this rib and this rib, just inboard of the curvy one at the back. And that should go right in the middle of the frame rails down the length of the vehicle. Now, when I say frame rails, I mean, so for my purposes, 
effectively from the side where I'll get the plywood to if I copy this subfloor or this rubber flooring I'm going to be looking at 16 and a half inches in should be the same on this side about 16 and a half inches in would put me on center I can get some good self tappers straight through there I'll be running any supports out of the half inch plywood and the foam across the van that way I don't have to run double layer or random other stuff to get it all level that'll level it out I'll put foam intermittently down the length of the van anywhere where those plywood furring strips is not from there copy out the subfloor lay that down and drill holes along the length of this rail like I said self-tapping screws and I'll probably run a screw every 18 inches or so that should give us a nice really solid base for this van shouldn't have any creaks in the floors anything like that so that will actually save me time overall I'm marking out where factory bolt holes were or anything in the actual floor since I know the dimension off the side I'm just gonna run screws in it every 18 inches or so That'll make it a lot easier. I can pre-drill it in the flooring, in the OSB when I get to that point, and then just run screws in, pre-drill and countersink, and then I'll fill those before new flooring goes on top to finish the finished floor. So, pretty dusty under there, so I'll clean that up as well. We'll get to it. Okay, so I laid down all the flooring. I got it nice and tight, hit it in with a hammer, like I said before. Those seams should be good. Since we're not marking out those holes, it shouldn't be an issue. I'm bringing this section where the step is further out this way and further out this way so that there's not a secondary little step when you go to get in the van. So rather than having the subfloor and whatever else stick up back here and go, inch or so above that I'm having the subfloor come out to this edge here so it'll be nice and flush this step will just be a little bit higher same around this this is gonna be further over so it'll be somewhere around there and then I'm gonna try and match this profile here nicely we'll see how that goes get measurements every let's say 16 to 18 inches down the length of the van get a measurement across for the furring strips so and then uh, once this is once the floor is actually the subfloor is cut out then I can trace that onto my foam sheets and get that cut out that'll be going down first So this is what we're left with here after cutting down the plywood. So this is effectively what you're going to be looking at if you were the van floor itself. So this will be flipped over. Um, any of these spaces, any of the spaces between the boards, between the plywood, is going to be filled with this EPS uh, foam with the radiant barrier. So that's what I'm setting up now. Setting up that, I'm gonna measure it out, measure what I need, and then uh, cut. go ahead and cut the foam to size, trace it off of this, and then I'll have to do a couple other little bits of plywood. Some places I might have to do double layers of plywood because it might sit inside of the ribs, um, inside here, or towards the outside so the corners don't sink.
So subfloors are laid in there, have the time lapse show everybody how that went. If you have any questions about that, go ahead and comment. Otherwise, tongue and groove floor just lies right in together. You want to be careful if you're cutting this out to think about how it's going to go together. So this front panel uh, had to go in first and had to slide forward somewhat for, sorry, cameras facing down had to slide forward somewhat to let the panel behind it in next other thing you want to think about is stuff like this this cut out here with that you're gonna to have to work around that when you drop the floor in so you want to leave yourself a little bit of extra room and then also wheel wells when you're cutting out wheel wells it's nice to have a seam in the middle of the wheel well it makes it a lot easier to place the subfloor I'm going to do is I marked out where the rib is that follows those frame rails on the bottom. So those screws, all of my self tapping screws will go in this rail and be hidden. So if you get underneath the van, you won't see a bunch of screws hanging down. You won't get cut up if you're under there working under there. So I have that marked out. I'm going to draw out a line and then go down the line. Probably same deal every 18 inches. I'll put a screw in and I'll try to put those screws into all of the plywood strips that I have going across the floor. That way it's not bowing or pulling it into the styrofoam underneath. Keep the floor nice and level. Got the subfloor in and then I've still been cranking here and there a little bit. Uh, mostly I've been working on the wire harness, the factory wire harness here. It's ran inside the van from the factory in just a wiring tray kind of that runs down the length of the van and then around back. I'll flip the camera around here and show you. So this wiring harness here comes out from the driver's side and then ran on the outside all along here all the way down the length of the van 
up and then across the top by the doors and then ran down through this and then down there and that was run inside of the bottom there and that runs to the slider door so what i do because i want all this to run internally this is my end point so i unhooked it from right here and unhooked it from the tail light the grounds down here the three grounds these two plugs have to come off all the clips have to come off and then you have to pull it all the way back through pull it off all the way front pull your light wiring if you have it backup camera brake light then pull it all the way back through here pull it all the way to the front full harness it's very long time consuming but this is how you get it run through so I'm not gonna be using these lights they're just in here temporarily so those are just gonna get unplugged and tucked in the wall everything else is gonna get insulated I put a hole right here this hole has a pretty good size pass through in there I don't know if you can see that Got a pretty good size pass through I taped multiple layers anywhere where I wasn't uh, or where I was afraid of it chafing and whatever else uh, grommets would be better I may still swap it out for grommets we'll see uh, if I have time and if I have room for where they need to go but uh, everywhere it's like triple layered taped which I've never had any issues with in the past on stuff so as long as it's not rubbing actively it should be fine so I did have to drill that hole tuck it through here then I have let's see if I can get that on video I kind of daisy chained Put these two holes in the wall to get through. And the harness runs up through there. This is where the factory driver side slider door would go. Also, this is a you know, solid pillar there. So then ran continuously through the top here in that channel. I cut out here because this harness had to go down to the tail light. So trim this out, taped it all up trimmed this out so basically the ceiling panel should come somewhere right there cover this up so it shouldn't be seen these are gonna get capped off and tucked in there no use for those plug that back in brought it back over did the same exact thing over here tucked it through there hooked the taillight back up and then connected it back so that's at least how I'm hiding the wiring. If you have a better idea, feel free to drop it in the comments. That's how, that's how I've done it before and never had any issues with it. Works nicely. And as long as you tape off any of your abrasion points, never had any issues with it. So now, next thing up I'm doing, I should clean up, but I'll save that for later is measuring out what I'm going to do on the roof. So I have to fit a six inch round dome max fan in the shower, which is going to be right here. A max fan deluxe 7500, which is right over there in the center of the roof here before it starts to curve down into the front of the roof, which is a pretty long curve, but I wouldn't want to mount a fan there. So I'm going to mount that there if possible. Immediately behind that, have the Dometic RTX 2000 AC unit, which runs on 12 volt. That's going to go right behind there. And then I have three solar panels, which are 26 inches wide and 68 inches long. And they're going to be going across the van in the 68 direction, stacked 26, one, two, three, which with a frame around them, frame roof rack, will equal right around 80 inches. So that 80 inches is gonna have to be really tight on this back. And realistically, probably gonna have those solar panels sticking out just a hair, right at about the level of the brake light backup camera. It should give me just enough room for those things. And then I may end up running 100 or 150 watt solar panel on the front curve of the van if we need it to run the AC. 
Hopefully these lights aren't blinding on camera, but basically I measured 80 inches from the back where I'm planning on. That was right here. From there forward, I measured six inches, which is the amount of space from the edge of the AC unit to the cut hole of the AC unit with a little bit of margin of error built in there, about an inch, not much. Then I have a cut template, roof window template provided by Dometic. So that is going to be more or less the hole that's going in the roof there. Then it's another six inches forward. That's where the unit ends. And then that's where I can hopefully have enough room to put my max fan. It's going to be very tight. And then what I'll do is drill a eighth inch pilot hole. Once I know they're centered, square, everything like that, I'll drill an eighth inch pilot hole at each corner. And then I'll move to the roof and cut them from the roof. So I'll drill a hole saw hole somewhere in the middle of that, uh, about an inch and a half. And I'll use a drill attached nibbler. I'll show you that tool when I get to that. It's a pretty cool tool and it works really well for stuff like this. Uh, I'm not sure 100% how the drill attachment one works, but it's 35 bucks versus 300 bucks for the Makita nibbler or whatever else. A, a dedicated nibbler tool. So we'll see how the drill one works. But that'll probably be in the next video. For this video, it'll, yeah, it'll just be the flooring and the setup and the wiring and we'll call that for part one part two will be coming up soon I do want to shout out nomadic cooling I believe that's their name nomadic cooling co out of Phoenix Arizona they hooked it up with this Dometic they're like the only distributor I could find in the US that has Dometic RTX's and they had it in stock and available for pickup. They held it for me. Super nice people there. Quick, easy, in and out. And yeah, hopefully it works. Hopefully it works as well as that experience went. So thanks for watching everybody. If you like this type of content, these builds, anything like that, please consider subscribing, like the video, comment. I love to hear people's stories. If I can help at all, I try to respond to as many comments as reasonable. I hope YouTube adds a search function in the comments because that would make finding answers a lot easier for people looking. And I appreciate you guys watching. Catch you next time. Part two.